morning, everybody. Um, we left off on starting chapter four today. Um, so far in chapters one through three, we've had um our two main characters, or it could be four, depending on how which would be El Ray. Um, he is the main character. His little sister Alfie, who is another character. Um, his mom and his dad and he's kind of gone through a description of some of the kids that he has in his class and the basis behind um, knowing those people are because he plans on finding a new best friend so a lot of the characters that have been mentioned we've not necessarily met yet but when we left off in chapter three he was it was Monday morning he was um, trying to make sure he wasn't late for school so he could start with his new secret plan on finding a new best friend. So um, we do know that he is um, he's smart. He's uh, charismatic. Um, El Ray enjoys playing. He enjoys recess, TV. Um, we do know that his little sister is a bit sassy. She has been um, categorized as a diva. Um, she likes for her clothes to look good, her hair to match her clothes, um, or her hair bows to match her clothes. Um, she's always got like a witty comeback. So they bicker back and forth, just like siblings would do. Um, Dad is a geologist um, teacher at a university in San Diego, I believe. Um, at a college. So, um, and then mom, she was, I think in chapter three, they described her as tall, um, with caramel colored skin. Um, and she does something with literature. Can't remember. But, um, anyway, so that's what we know so far. So we're going to start with chapter four. Um, chapter four, like a spy. Oak Glen Primary School goes from kindergarten through sixth grade, which puts our third grade class right in the middle. If you count kindergarten, and us third grade kids are in the middle size, are in the middle size wise too, except for me. I am the shortest kid, boy or girl, in Miss Sanchez's class, and I have been all semester. I keep hoping that someone even shorter will transfer in, like a leprechaun maybe, but no such luck. I'm sorry, my dogs are after a toy. Hold on. Dad tells me I'll start growing taller pretty soon, but when? If the weather is nice, which it almost always is in Oak Glen, we play outside near the picnic tables before school starts. Well, the boys play, and the girls in our class mostly just hang, talk or whisper, and make fun of us boys. My opinion is that girls don't want to mess up their clothes first thing in the morning. Excuse me, their outfits. And that's starting on page 24. They say they're running around for later in the day. I walk toward the picnic tables as if I'm seeing the guys in my class for the first time. I feel like a spy. Hey, El Ray, my friend Corey calls out, waving at me. Corey has blonde hair and freckles, and he usually smells like chlorine. He works out before school at a swimming pool in an Oak Glen gym. That's why. And then, after school, he works out at an aquatics center in a big town nearby. Aquatics means doing stuff in the water. An aquatics center has more than one pool, Corey says. Also, they're longer and more official looking. And nobody has fun there the way Corey tells it. But he's having fun now, at least. Corey is playing with a wooden paddle board with his latest obsession. He must have sneaked it into school in his backpack. This doesn't break any big rule, except for the one that says you can't bring toys to school. And Cynthia and Fiona say that the paddle part of the toy could be used as a weapon. Page 25. They keep threatening to tell on him, but Cynthia's tootie... Toothy headband could be used as a weapon. So could a book, if it was thick enough. Corey said the paddle boarding is a sport. This kind of paddle boarding with a red rubber ball at, attached to a small paddle by a piece of elastic string. Page 26. Not the kind you do standing on a board in the ocean. 
And grown-ups are always trying to get us kids to do more sports, aren't they? They have meetings about it all the time with cake. Also, Corey never plays with his paddleboard in class. I'm not saying he's right to sneak it into school. I'm just reporting the facts. Another fact is that he, until he gets caught and the paddleboard gets taken away from him, Corey is likely to keep bringing it to Oak Glen. Watch this, he tells me, bouncing the ball off the board about 10 times in a row. Bam, 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 bam. Don't you dare hit me with that thing, Corey Robertson, I, I'm, or I'm telling. Cynthia calls out from one of the girls' picnic tables right on schedule. She's about 10 feet away from Corey, who, of course, ignores her. I sneak a spy-like peek over at Marco and, and Major, who are playing on the beat-up grass. Page 27. They are huddled over there like, like little plastic knights Marco collects and sneaks into school. We don't mean to be bad. We're just trying to have some extra fun. I think Marco would live in the olden days if he could, and Major would be right there with him. Me, I'm more of a modern-day kind of kid. I like cell phones and tablets, and the more apps stuffed into everything, the better. Most of all, I like video games. My current favorite is my current favorite one is Die Creature Die. I got it for Christmas. It's handheld, but still cool. They didn't have that in the olden days, Marco. I shift my sneaky spy gaze over to Nate Marshall. His red rooster crest looks extra perky today. Remember, that's his hair. He is explaining something to Kevin, who looks confused. Kevin is trying to sneak away. See? Nate is saying, keeping up with him, like they have magnets in their legs. Don't you get it? The cylinder head delivers the spark. Sort of. I think I get it, Kevin says, looking around in a save me kind of way. I think Kevin is afraid there's going to be a quiz and school hasn't even started yet. Page 28. Hmm, I think turning Nate into a spare friend might be too much work, especially now when I need fast results. Meanwhile, Jason Leffer is laughing with Jared and Stanley on the other side of the boys' picnic table. I think he's pretending he just pulled a giant booger out of his nose, only it's, re it's really a raisin from his lunch sack. Excuse me for saying booger. I am just reporting the facts. He's going to eat it, Fiona shrieks from one of the girls' picnic tables. They don't officially have girls' tables and boys' tables at Oak Glen Primary School, by the way. I think doing that is against the law. It just works out that way about girls' tables and boys' tables once you get past first or second grade. I forget. That was a long time ago. The point is, Jason is fun. But Diego Romero can be fun, too, I remind myself. Right now, Diego is leaning against the tree reading a car magazine. I don't know much about cars, but the magazine looks pretty cool. And once Diego is my friend, I can sort of scooch him over to up to stuff that doesn't involve reading. Page 29. Things I like to do. So, Diego and Jason it is, I decide. If I play this right, I'll have two spare friends. A spare and a spare spare. Alfie will be so impressed. She, she'll feel good about coming to Oak Glen Primary School next year. Hey, I say, scuffing my way over to Diego's tree. Cars, huh? Brilliant, Elray. Yeah, Diego says, marking his place with a finger and looking up at me with a friendly smile. Hey, an accidental good start. What kind of cars do you want to have when you turn 16? Diego asked me, really curious. <clears throat> Not my mom's old one, that's for sure, is all I can think. Because after all, turning 16 is eight years away, and that's a whole other lifetime since I'm only eight year years old now. But luckily, the warning buzzer sound before I have to answer Diego, later dude, I say, trying to match his earlier smile without being too weird. But Diego's not even looking at me. He's too busy getting his stuff together. Page 30. Dude! Corey calls out, winding the electric string loosely around his paddleboard. 
handle and jamming it into his book into his backpack. Who are you growling at? Nobody, I say, trying to erase my goofy smile as if as we all head toward class. Just a normal Monday morning, I tell myself, but things are looking up. I've made my choice. My choices, I mean. Now, all I need to do is find a way to get Diego's and Jason's attention so they'll want to be my friends. And that is the end of chapter four. Um, so just like we did yesterday, I want you to do your flip grid response, but I want you to summarize. So just point out a couple of things that happened and um put that in your flip grid response and reference one page. So just point out one one detail and put that in your response and then summarize, give an overall explanation as to what happened in that chapter. Sort of how I do at the beginning of these videos. I summarize what we uh, read yesterday and I just kind of put it into like one little chunk of information. I don't really go too much into detail. That's what a summary is. I want you to just kind of give an overall explanation um, for the chapter. Say, for example, how you just read a new book, you're really excited about it, you just finished it, and you want someone else to read it. So you summarize what the book was about and try to get them interested in it so they'll want to read it too. So you're not pointing out every little thing and, you know, losing someone's attention, but all you're doing is just kind of giving a roundabout explanation as to what it was about. So that's what I want you to start doing for the chapters, okay? So um, tomorrow you're doing your independent um, work because it is Friday. Um, so I will not see you, but I will see you bright and early on Monday morning with chapter five. Y'all have a great weekend.